The AI thing is incredibly interesting. It's like any new technology that comes down the pipe. It is incredibly terrifying while it's incredibly promising at the same time. That's always a good thing. That reminds me of internet, the internet when it hit. It reminds me of email when it hit. It reminds crypto. me of social media when it hits. It remi- I'm going to digital assets here in a second, right? It reminded me of crypto and Bitcoin and digital assets when it hit. Everything goes through this skepticism. It's a scam. It will never work resistance phase. But yet, if you can play both sides, it takes a lot of discipline and a lot of awareness, by the way, to be really balanced and independent and be able to look at the good and the bad in anything. Very few people can do it. Very, very few people can do it. They get really swayed with dogma easily, right? Their, sure. their first impression of something, there's a terminology, it's called anchoring, I think, where they, the first thing they hear about something, that, that becomes an anchor and they, they, they can't see past it. So if the first thing you ever heard about AI was that it's terrifying and it's going to ruin the world, then you're going to anchor to that and probably find a belief system right. around that unless you're aware of it and you catch it. Same thing with Bitcoin. It, it's for years. It's, it's a scam. It's not anything. It's invisible. It doesn't work. 1,000, 10,000, 30,000, 60,000, 90,000. And now you've got, a, you've got Wall Street banks buying literally trillions of Bitcoin. It's now a categorized digital asset, no different than gold. It's just not physical, right? So if you can look at the good and the bad and you can play both sides and you can somehow stay in the middle, that's where we are with AI today. So looping back to what I'm doing, you said what you're doing, it's similar, is two things. Number one is processes all the way. We in, we're installing EOS. EOS, for those that don't know, is the Entrepreneur Operating System. It's a global consulting company and it's a global process that has stood the test of time for I don't even know how many decades at this point. But every single one of my private clients uses EOS and they've been saying, you need to use it, you need to use it, you need to do it. And I've resisted it, frankly, for years, not because I thought there was anything wrong. It's because my whole company is virtual and I'm a physical guy. I would prefer to do a high level consulting model in person. So I had to get past that. It's okay to have everybody virtual because with the EOS model, you're doing full consulting days five times a year. And I don't love consulting all day on a Zoom. I'd rather be in a room, in a conference room, or in a hotel. That's how I'm wired. That's how you're wired. So I got past that. And then secondly, you have to have a couple of key people in place to really make it effective. And now I do, right? So that's, yeah. that's, so the EOS model for me and my company, Pipeline Pro 2005, we're installing EOS. We're all in, we're doing a two-year contract. I don't, I don't test things. I do things. We're doing a two-year contract. Okay. Now for me, how did I bridge that gap? The facilitator is, he is in Miami. I'm in Naples and I'm in Miami all the time, right? That's where I used to live, right? So I can actually be in person. And I can meet with her in person and I can have that hybrid experience where me, the owner and the CEO, will run it out of Florida together, but our people can be virtual. So I've, I've bridged that hybrid gap. Secondly, let's talk about AI. So we're changing our whole company structure, as you know, in 2025 from a marketing standpoint, where we're leading with AI. We've spent the whole 2024, this is important, I'll put a link down below, is Pipeline Pro, my software company, which is now an Inc. 5000 company, five years old now, global company, tens of thousands of users, dozens of different countries. We're now moving from just being a sales and marketing CRM company to a lead generation AI company, which means we now have software built into our platform that is lead generation AI driven, which means we can get to any decision maker in any business anywhere in the world and pull every piece of information on that person and bring it into our platform and immediately be able to start an outreach campaign, a, a cold outreach, a marketing outreach campaign to that decision maker. I could find Aaron Parkinson in the Cayman Islands, CEO of Seven Mile Media, all of your social media properties, phone number if it exists, any email addresses you have and your physical address of you and or your company in a matter of seconds. And the best part is our tool will write a message to you that's specific to you based on everything I just said, it won't send these canned messages. So we can actually find that's it. That's what I really like. And then we can, and then the AI tool crafts that chat GPT style message that's specific to the person. So the message to Aaron Parkinson would be very different than the message to Andrew Cass because we're two different people. We have two totally different online profiles and footprints and boom, that's the game now. So processes and systems, yes. And then not only are we utilizing AI, we're now selling AI as a software tool for you, the business owner, entrepreneur, grow your business and have steady, consistent leads coming in week in and week out. And this is where, I, you know, that's why I'm saying you need to learn more about this in 2025 if you've been putting it off or if you've been scared of it or whatever the, the reason is that you've stopped is what does it cost, Andrew, to have somebody 24 hours a day 
researching people, understanding Oof. their biography, and then custom tailoring messages and That's saying, right. hey, we're super interested in this. We noticed this about you. It's super, super cool. Did you ever thought about maybe doing this with your thing? Hey, let me know if you want and starting full-blown conversations. That's exactly right what you just said. And it isn't 24 hours a day. It's like four hours a day. What do you mean? Meaning it doesn't require 24 hours a day because of the technology. You can get all that information with a focused couple hours a day with the tool. You don't need to be 24 hours a day. Oh yeah, I'm just saying that the machine- The, the machine agent, will, yeah. The machine, the agent is working for you for free. Yeah. 24 hours a day. I actually saw a post the other day that said chat GPT can now be phone called and mm -hmm. I called it and it was an AI agent having a full blown conversation with me. It's amazing. And I was thinking to myself, think about all of these mundane jobs. That's right. That are going to get eliminated because it doesn't get tired. Mm -hmm. It doesn't talk back. It doesn't yep. ask for raises. It's consistent all day, 24 seven. Yep. It does exactly what you want it to do. So does that mean a whole bunch of people are going to lose their jobs? Yes, they will. However, what does that mean? Understand how to incorporate yourself into these changes before it happens to you, yeah. i.e. like becoming my copywriting architect. That's right. Listen, right? the AI thing, Aaron, also is the, the people who should be the most concerned about AI eliminating them are the people who have the least amount of skills and the least amount of value to bring to the marketplace. They're usually right. low-level administrative type people. So if that's you and you feel like, wow, I'm really just I'm really not in a niche. I'm really not a specialist in what I do. I'm not a copywriting specialist. I'm not an advertising specialist. I'm not a high level consultant that focuses on one thing in a business, right? If you're not a specialist in some area, then most likely AI can replace you because you're not a specialist. You're an admin in, the, in, in AI. And frankly, AI is admin in the form of a robot to put it in layman's terms, right? Yep. But to your point, a copywriter, literally a heart surgeon, these people aren't going to be replaced. They're going to use AI tools to do better heart surgery. They're going to yeah. use AI tools to write better advertising copy, right? A quarterback for the New England Patriots is not going to be replaced with AI because an AI robot can't throw a football. But you know what that quarterback might do? Use AI to analyze and scrutinize his opponent. Use 100%. AI to maybe craft different plays that may be Maybe it took them too long to craft the play and maybe some AI modules can be put in. You'll see it in football soon because football Absolutely. is such a X's and O's and chess match type of game.